What's going on, my guys? My name is Alejandro. Today, I want to talk to you because I want to buy a car, and I know it's a little bit different than before. Normally, whenever you guys see a YouTuber or anyone that's here making a decision of buying a car, they've already made the decision. I want to show you guys the whole process that I go through rationally before I buy a car. And this is a big one because I'm going to spend anywhere between one to two million dollars right now on a car. So I don't want to make just a dumb decision and just buy something that will be completely fucked up. I'm going to show you all the stuff that I look at before making my final decision. And then when I make the decision, just always know that the heart sometimes will pull you in a different direction. Just know that. So let's get started with all of our options right now. The first company that comes to mind when buying a brand new car is Ferrari because that's the standard for supercar owners. Anyone that is growing up right now is aspiring to have a Ferrari, a Lamborghini or one of those cars. So that's what Ferrari is. What does Ferrari got going on for itself as a brand? Ferrari's got that racing history from back in the day. They also have that Formula One racing history and also beautiful, subtle Italian designs on their cars meant for the modern day gentleman. That's what Ferrari as a company brings to the table. So let's dive even a little bit deeper. So where does Ferrari stand today? Today, Ferrari is producing those beautiful Italian designs for the modern gentleman and that they're mostly focused on selling cars to collectors. So th that means they're looking for repeated business. They want to sell to the same guy that they've sold before the same car many times and charge you even a little bit more for those cars that they already make that they just rebody. So that's, that's where Ferrari stands today. So how does Ferrari's future look? Because we got to analyze the future of a company because if you're investing in their car, and you don't want to lose your ass you want to make sure that they're going to be on top by the time you want to sell or years ahead i don't think there's going to be a problem in the coming years but i think in the future future long play ferrari is not going to be what they are today the way i see ferrari today is they're a little stuck they're not developing any new exciting technology to make the cars faster lighter more efficient none of that they're not at the head of design either there's many other companies that do better designs they're not at the head of performance either so they're just there not creating any new value to their company. That's the way I see Ferrari and that's where they are today. Uh, as far as experience with the brand, I've had four Ferraris and why I stopped buying Ferraris was I tried to buy my fifth one. They called me and they said, we have a car right here in the showroom. So they brought me in, they showed me the car and they said, by the way, this car is not for sale. I was like, then why are you bring me in? And then they said, well, if you want it, we can probably give it to you if you buy that FF that's there. So they try to sell cars on selling people other cars that no one wants. So it's brilliant marketing from Ferrari. That was my last experience with them. So all in, why is not a good time for me to invest in Ferrari? Uh, one thing that tells me that they're not advancing anything is they haven't done anything electric. They haven't pushed anything more than the LaFerrari and that was a huge fail. The SUV, they're the last ones to come out with the SUV and they're not happy about it. It's just several things that other car makers have done for years already and Ferrari hasn't done. So that's why no Ferrari. On to the next one. Now let's talk about Porsche. Is it a good time to buy a Porsche? What's going on with Porsche right now and what are they known for? Porsche is known for being that German engineering that has to be OCD to the point where it's a little bit too much. They have amazing racing history. They have incredible cars today out and they're known for the value proposition engineering. They're incredibly well priced for what the cars can do. Amazing, amazingly priced. So what is Porsche doing today? Porsche is right now engineering and producing the fastest cars in the world. That's what they're up to right now. And on top of that, they're all six cylinders, so they're efficient on top of incredible. So that's what Porsche is up to these days. So how's Porsche's future looking? And I gotta tell you guys, Porsche's future is looking so bright. Indeed, it's looking like the sun. And the reason why is, Porsche just now acquired 10% of Rimac. Rimac is a technology company out of Croatia and they produce cars too. So they specialize in electric powertrains. So Rimac right now got 10% interest purchased by Porsche. Why? Because also Porsche is becoming the platform for everything. So now Porsche is owned by VW Group, right? Which is a huge company. They own Bugatti, they own Lamborghini, they own Porsche, they own Audi, they own everything. So today Porsche is at the head of that company, of that massive conglomerate. How? By providing the best and the greatest technology right now. If you look at the Panamera chassis right now, and it's the future of car making, right? It's modular cars and modular chassis. That chassis from the Panamera is being used in the RS7 and it's also used in the brand new Bentley GT. So it's got many uses. This is what Porsche is doing. They're delivering the technology to VW for the future. So the future on VW is fucking set. 
let's just say that Porsche is looking great. What are the cons of buying a Porsche right now? It's simple. Porsche wants to get rid of car flippers and they said that and they made it evident with the 911R. They said, no more of that. We're going to come out with a car with a GT2 RS that's going to be for everyone that wants it because Porsche is dope like that. But at the same time, they're dumping as many cars as they can to their dealerships and their dealers, their scum bag dealerships are the one making the money. So they're taking away the appreciation that Ferrari, for example, gives to a customer and they're giving it to their dealerships, which are scumbags and have screwed people. And if you read any of the headlines out there, you would understand what I'm talking about. This is why that's a con right now, because Porsche doesn't know how to deal with value for their brand. What was my experience working with Porsche? I've gotten so many cars from them. I had two 918s, I had a 4.0 GT3 RS, I had a 991 GT3 RS, I just bought a GT2 RS, I had a GT4, I've had a 4S. I've had so many Porsches, I love them. They're amazing, incredible cars. I had a great experience with them. I think right now they're just a little bit confused as to where they wanna go. And also another negative is they're terrible at producing cars. And what do I mean by that is, even if you look at the GT2 RSs, there's not magnesium wheels for everyone. When they were making the GT3 RSs back in the day, they didn't have enough bucket seats. They're not very good at production, even though they're incredible at engineering, if that makes any sense. So no Porsche for me right now. And now let's jump into something that I'm really excited about, Bugatti. Bugatti, what are they known for? What is Bugatti known for? For giving you the best and greatest product that exists, period. That is the top of the top. Like if you want to give one of these to the world because you have so much fucking money and it was so well engineered and the best white glove service and the most expensive services, that's what you're buying with a Bugatti. So where does Bugatti stand as a company right now? Today, Bugatti is making the fastest and most amazingly engineered machine. It's called the Bugatti Chiron, and they're making some additions to that. Uh, in the past, they were known for their racing history and also known for their coach building of those cars that they made back in the day. To me, Bugatti and Rolls-Royce went on a very different tangent, even though they were very parallel in the past. And then Rolls-Royce said, I'm just going to focus on comfortable. And Bugatti said, I'm just going to focus on the best of speed. And that's what they did. So Bugatti would be the Rolls Royce of speed, if you will. And that's what they are. It's amazing. So how is Bugatti's future looking? After I had a chance to sit in with the CEO and all of the main people at Bugatti, I realized that they're a little bit scared. And I'm not saying that they said that to me, but I think it was a vibe in the air. I'm just going to call it that. Why? Because obviously they're going to have to get rid of that W16 engine and they're going to have to go electric. And at this point, the fear is if you're going to go electric, what makes you different from Remac? What makes you different from that Remac that seems to be very comfortable and plush? What's going to be different from those cars that Pininfarina is doing with Remac, for example, that are really plush and they're going to be insane looking? What is Bugatti going to do in the future? And I don't know. And that's why, as far as the future for Bugatti goes, Let's also talk about the pros of buying a Bugatti today. The pro of buying a Bugatti today is you're just letting yourself know that you just got it all. You've made it, right? That's, that's basically it. You're buying the best engineered car, the most comfortable one, the fastest. You just have it all. That's what you're buying. That's the pro of a Bugatti today. What are the cons? Oh my God, depreciation. Depreciation hits these cars like a motherfucker. When the Veyron came out, they were $1.7 million. Not that long after, you could have purchased one for $600,000 at some point. So they depreciate like crazy. The Chiron's now going on their sticker and all of the new cars that are gonna come out are still gonna do it. Eventually they'll go up, but it's gonna be a long, long time before they go up in value. And also, if you wanna be someone in Bugatti's radar, you gotta buy two or three and that's like 10 to $12 million. So. Those are the cons of buying a Bugatti. So what has my Bugatti experience been like? It's been great. I've met with the guys. They've been so kind and nice. And honestly, everything is white glove. I am 100% very interested in buying a Veyron. So that's where I'm at right now with Bugatti. That's my only relationship with them. I've driven the Bugatti Supersport and uh, the Bugatti Vitesse. And I, I love them. I never understood until I drove them. That's, that's all I got to say. So... We're out there trying to get a Veyron, baby. Why a Veyron and not a Chiron? It's too much money in the Chiron and it's something that will depreciate absolutely even more. So I'm just going to wait for the right time to buy one of those. But for now, a Veyron is the car that I saw that created the gap. Hey, Lamborghini, I haven't forgotten about you. We're going to talk about you now. What is Lamborghini today? What is Lamborghini known for? Lamborghini is just known for their epic, bold, non-apologetic designs. That means they fucking put design first and then everything else second. And it shows their older cars were honestly a little bit of a disaster, if you will. And the new ones, I, I gotta tell you, 
Now that the new ones came out, we're seeing what Lamborghini can truly do. But Lamborghini is all about design and I love it. Where does Lamborghini stand as a company? That's very interesting because right now I think Lamborghini is making one of the best cars out on the market with the Performante. I think Lamborghini today is making the best cars it's ever made. And it's not just by a little bit. I think it's to the point where they're number two in the world out there with uh, McLaren and Porsche. They're, they're all up there competing for that number one spot as far as that goes. And for me to say that about a Lamborghini, should say a lot of great things. So you might be wondering at this point, how bright is the future for Lamborghini? The future for Lamborghini seems brighter than ever. Why? Because they're a part of VW Group. That means there's a lot of emphasis in electrification of your powertrains. That also means not that we're seeing the best Lamborghinis that have ever existed come out of the factory. We know that the future is only going to get better. And especially knowing that the Unico, the one that they're making, I think 83 or whatever of, that's going to be their hypercar that looks like Terzo Millennial, that's going to be on a different level of performance. So Lamborghini finally became a performance firm that can design crazy. The future for Lamborghini, if you ask me, is bright as my eyes. What was my experience with Lamborghini? My experience with Lamborghini has been interesting. I got two Aventadors uh, back in the day and now I got a Performante. The Aventadors were clunky. I always wanted a Lambo, but the presence and the noise that they make, it's an experience of its own, to be honest with you. It's not a great car, but it's a great experience. But now with these cars, I'm in love with what Lamborghini is doing. And I just hope they can get a little bit more into what MSO is doing. Because if you can imagine, like personalized Lamborghinis would be other level. So Lamborghini, am I buying a Lamborghini? You all know about the SVJ, but I'm not entirely sure about anything else. I'm not going to be able to get an Unico right now. So I'm going to stay away from them right now as far as my big purchase goes, because I cannot get the one car that they make. That's why. And last but not least, of course, we got to talk about McLaren because they're known for that racing history, for those Senna races. And also for a lot of you guys that don't know, McLaren is not only a car company, it's actually not a car company. McLaren is a technology company that focuses on process. That means they're making everything more efficient, even cars. So keep an eye out for McLaren because they're dope. So the past for McLaren has been uh, an insane pass for Formula One. They have a lot of victories in Formula One, so they've done that really well. And obviously the McLaren F1, which is one of the most legendary cars to ever come out of any car company as of today. That, that's got a lot to say about McLaren. McLaren right now today is making the fastest, most insane cars. And actually the speed of development that they've gotten into has been insane. Their cars come out from one year to the next and they're so much faster that actually has been affecting their market a little bit because people are like, you're always going to come out with a better phone and you're basically doing what the iPhone's doing. Everyone's doing that. The problem with McLaren is that their cars are so good, the gap is so big every year that people just don't respect it. But they should fucking be on their knees and being like, whoa, holy shit. That's what McLaren's doing today. Just the fastest cars on earth. That's it. But when we talk about a car company, we always got to look at their future because that's where they're going to be. That's where the value has to be created. So what is McLaren right now doing towards their future? Number one, they're building a lot of brand value. A lot of people are becoming repeated customers. They're going the Ferrari way about having people rebuy cars. And I love that in the way that they're doing it, to be honest with you, even though I don't get the cars. They're building value. Another one, they're building the best cars by a lot. They're also daring more than everybody else to push the envelope, like with the Senna. They were the first ones to make a car that follows function rather than form. I mean, who else is doing shit like that? They're working in electric powertrains. I mean, they're doing it all. McLaren's future seems to be so bright. I don't think any other car company other than Lamborghini and Porsche can compete against them. And they're a small company that started about seven years ago again. What the fuck? What are the pros of buying a brand new McLaren today? The pros are you're just going to have the best supercar today, period. That's it. You're going to have the fastest, the most efficient, the nicest interior, all of that stuff. That's what you're going to get. What are the cons? That they keep making more and more fucking cars every year that are so good and everyone keeps complaining about it. So what is my relationship with McLaren? It's rather simple. I don't have a relationship with McLaren, but I own a 720S and I had two LTs. And obviously I like to build a relationship, but I don't have the money to buy the BP23, the Senna, keep it for eight years and do all that shit. I'm just a dude trying to have some fun with these cars and buy whatever the fuck he wants. So that's where my relationship with McLaren has been. As far as owning the cars, I adore my 720S. I actually think it's the best car out there today. Let's not count this because that's a whole different type of special. But in today's market, that 720S has no competitors. So would I invest in McLaren? Absolutely. I think the two companies that I would invest in right now would be Bugatti because it's going to be a steady 
uh, it's kind of like investing in the stock market. It's always gonna go up no matter what. You just gotta wait 10 years. And the other one would be McLaren, to be honest with you, because I want the latest and greatest and baddest. So now I gotta make a decision. Am I buying a Senna or am I buying a Veyron? I'm not gonna tell you, I'm just gonna show you. Oh, 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 oh,